crawling up the cladding like it was nothing, was how one eyewitness described last night's fire. The upper floors of the six-storey student residence, named The Cube, were so engulfed. The, the buildings one quarter the size of Grenfell Tower. No sprinklers, but the alarms went off. Evacuation began almost immediately. There were multiple fire exits and 200 firefighters were deployed. It was terrifying because at first I thought maybe I'll be let back in because it would be controlled on the fourth floor where I think it started. But then I went further back down the road right near at the rear of it and I just see flames coming over the top of all the buildings. An investigation has begun. Cladding on the building is not the same as the material on Grenfell but is one focus for the inquiry. By all accounts, the fire spread very rapidly indeed. Behind us, the building is clad in high pressure laminate. It's not aluminium composite material. And we were aware of the cladding system that was on this building. And obviously there were interim measures in place. Every apartment had a fire alarm and we also had a air horn within the kind of communal areas of the building, which did um, sound and did alert. Two and a half years on from Grenfell, and the cladding issue has not gone away, but other lessons have been learned. Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue Service dispatched a second team just to focus on evacuation. Senior students were also on hand to help everyone out of the building. The stay put policy did not apply here, and former Grenfell residents travelled up today to offer support. This is not just Grenfell's fight, this is a nationwide problem that we need to solve. You know, we. we these are our young people, these are our future, and we can't put them in buildings that are dangerous. Thank you. Around 100 students lived in the building. Many have lost all their belongings. But Bolton University is by no means the only college to lease cladded accommodation. The system is the responsibility, so we're all, all, all of us politicians, all the people like me, up and down the country, it's our fault. Collectively, we haven't done enough to get this thing sorted out. And it's not a party political thing, it's not the current government, it's not the previous government in coalition or the Labour government who's where this really started in 2006. Every politician in the country should look in the mirror to their own conscience, really, to say, what more can I do to try and get this thing sorted? It was fortunate, it was 8.30 at night, it wasn't one o'clock in the morning. There was an alarm system which you don't have in residential blocks, in student blocks you do. Um, so th there's a, a, an awful lot of remedial work that needs to be happening quickly. But... There's been nothing but praise for Manchester's firefighters and what's been described as the speed of decision making. The Cube is not a high-rise building. The ladders could get above it. But yet another type of cladding is under suspicion. Well, our correspondent Kieran Jenkins is in Bolton now. Um, Kieran, you're there and so earlier today was the Prime Minister. Tell us about that. That's right. Well, clearly Boris Johnson was not scheduled to be in Bolton today, but this election of his isn't quite sticking to the script. Now, up close here, if you look at the, the top floors of this building, it's frightening how the cladding has almost completely burned away. And Boris Johnson will be all too aware of the context. He will know of the concerns that remain about cladding on certain buildings after the Grenfell fire, although, as you heard, this was a different kind of material uh, here. So, no, his visit wasn't planned, but Boris Johnson was in Bolton today. He visited the university. He briefly met some of the students who were evacuated and saw the donations that have been flooding in. Uh, and then he came to the scene here to see the aftermath for himself. Now this, of course, uh, after many of you will have seen Boris Johnson having some difficult exchanges in y Yorkshire earlier this week with those affected by the floods. And in an election, this can matter. How swiftly you respond, how human any politician, Boris Johnson, Jeremy Corbyn or anyone else, appears in these unplanned circumstances. Here, though, what may ultimately matter more are the continuing questions over fire safety and the fact that all those months and years after Grenfell, there'll be people at home tonight worried that what happened here could happen to them. Kieran, thanks very much. Well, earlier I spoke to the mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, and asked him whether he was concerned that the cladding may have been partly responsible for the blaze. I'm very concerned, Cathy. I think anybody looking at the pictures last night immediately would have thought, oh my goodness, that looks like another Grenfell. 
Now, of course, the cladding on this building wasn't the same as the cladding on uh, Grenfell, but clearly it was highly flammable. And people may have seen images of cladding falling off the building into the street uh, just here. So, very worrying situation. And I, honestly, I don't think as a country yet we've fully woken up to the full implications of Grenfell. If I was a parent in a building with cladding, you know, would you really be sure of the safety of your, your family tonight? I don't think so. Well, what, what advice would you give parents who have students in accommodation and they're worried about cladding? What would you tell them right now? Well, it's very worrying, isn't it? One thing I can say is that there was an organisation within this building amongst the students that was highly effective when it needed to be. So uh, Kate and Jade, two student coordinators, went round the building knocking on the doors. And that is uh, a fantastic thing that they, that they did. So I would say to um, any parent whose kids are at university, you know, check those kind of arrangements through the university. Are there proper fire evacuation procedures in place in the halls of residence where your, your son or daughter might be? Shouldn't there be urgent checks made, particularly on student accommodation, about the extent of cladding and whether these buildings are safe, though? I think so. So after Grenfell, I set up a high-rise task force in Greater Manchester where we went round building by building and looked at the issues. And this building behind me was inspected as part of that. The problem is it's just short of what we call high-rise. So it just fell below that level. But nevertheless, we saw the images last night. It's clearly a major danger once it was in that, uh, in that fire situation. So <clears throat> that's why I say I'm not sure the country's fully woken up to the implications of Grenfell yet. I think there are many buildings out there with cladding on that may not kind of fit the technical um, def definition of being high-rise or indeed have different cladding to Grenfell, but nevertheless might be a, a fire trap. Just to clarify, when you did that inspection of that building as part of your, your general review, um, was it cleared as safe simply because it wasn't high-rise? or for another reason? It, it wasn't cleared as completely safe, uh, Cathy. It, it was placed under interim measures uh, where the fire service, our fire service here in Greater Manchester, had concerns about it. So, obviously, this is now going to be part of the uh, investigation. But isn't uh, it but, extraordinary you know, did, uh, that, that, that there was a question mark, a safety question mark, placed over that building and students were still allowed to live there? How can that have happened? Because, obviously, they were looking at the precise configuration of the building and it wasn't the cladding that was on Grenfell, I guess, would be one of the reasons. You know, the government said that that was the one that was the, the main concern. Uh, I think we were still saying, well, we're not completely reassured by that and that's why we had this building under, under interim uh, measures. And I'm not saying that there aren't issues for us to consider here in Greater Manchester. I'm sure there are. My concern, though, is, is the government doing enough to ensure building safety? I think... They are narrowing this issue far too much. I don't think the response to Grenfell has been adequate at all because there's the issue of, you know, buildings that are not technically high-rise but are nevertheless still quite tall buildings. They should be looked at. But also buildings with cladding that's not the ACM but is different types of cladding, like the laminate that's on, on this building. That's why I say this has got to go wider. But, Cathy, just to make the point, there are learnings from Grenfell and our own fire service has made some of those learnings. Last night they sent an evacuation uh, command alongside the traditional fire command. Because what they uh, thought was, you know, as well as people dealing with the fire, you do need now to have a different focus on getting people safely out of the building. Now, that was Greater Manchester's own learning from Grenfell. You must know, then, how many buildings you think are still unsafe because of the cladding in that region. Well, I'm not saying it, unsafe is the, is the right word. Certainly buildings that we have concerns uh, about. Uh, and I think that's some, somewhere in the 60s, 65 buildings where we have uh, concerns and where we um, believe uh, we need to, to continue to keep them under, under close, uh, close scrutiny. And that's what our high-rise task force is doing. What more would you like a Labour government to do to act on what happened at Grenfell then? I think we have to have a major overhaul of, of fire, fire safety regulation. In many ways, it was outsourced uh, in years gone by, and it needs to be brought back under the control of the fire service. They need to be the ultimate arbiters of whether or not a building is fire safe. And the government needs to take that on board. You know, learning the lessons from Grenfell, we need to overhaul building safety regulations, but also, I think, properly fund our fire services. Andy Burnham, thank you very much. Thank you very much.